We've come to the end of this week's special report. The Truth Commission's Human Rights Violations Committee has hearings in Pretoria, Beaufort West and Port Jefferson this coming week. And the Amnesty Committee sits in Durban. We'll meet you again next Sunday with full background reports on all these hearings. Goodbye. My daughter, whom I remember very well, Dr. Van der Waals, asked those soldiers to move away from the room because I cannot help this woman with you around. They were all men. They refused because I heard them talking over their radios and then afterwards they told the doctor that they should be there when I'm giving birth. They stood there, full, and I gave birth in their presence, looking at me, laughing at me when I was having labor pain. I was like a joke to them. I, it was terrible. Really, it was terrible because uh, uh, by that time, I did cry. And then sometimes, uh, praying for myself that if, God can take my, my life with a child, maybe it will be better. Because there was no privacy, even from my labor ward to, 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 to the ward, to the ward. Uh, 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 when I wanted to go to, to the toilet, they didn't want me to go to the toilet. If, if maybe I, 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 I'll run away. So they brought a bed pen to me, so my, I must help myself in front of them. It was really terrible. The the didn't care. Kinalo kwata mara. If maybe I I can see those people, and then if they can ask for forgiveness, yeah, I can forgive them. But just forgive, uh, just to, to to forgive for a person who don't see, no difficult really. It hurt me, especially when I see my son. No, it doesn't uh, touch me right. Rishka has just had her 11th birthday. Her mother is Zubeda Jaffa, journalist and a former unionist. Zubeda was a few months pregnant with her when she was detained in 1985. It was her second experience with the law. Her first detention was in 1980 when as a cub reporter with the Cape Times, she had written an article on police shootings on the Cape Flats, where most of the casualties were women and children. They were just ranting and raving on the telephone about it, about how I had kind of written about the police in a negative way. And, you know, when he came from the phone, he just beat me right across the room into the wall, and I was just, you know, flung across the room, hit the wall, and I was shuddering and shaking, and he said, it's all lies, you know, it's all lies, it's just written. At one stage they, they asked one of the men, men to rape me. He didn't actually do it, but he did come, you know, towards me if he was going to do it. And it was all part of a game that they were playing. In 1985, the physical assault was absent, but her interrogator, Captain Franz Mostert, had found a more dangerous weapon. But by the second detention, I think I understood, I thought about that and I understood what had happened what methods they'd used to kind of humiliate me and break me down. And so when they said to me, when they discovered that I was pregnant, you know, uh, I knew immediately that they were going to try and use this. And they did. He came and he said that, that they, he knew exactly how he was going to get me to cooperate and that they prepared, he prepared a chemical for me to drink to, to kill the baby and to he was going to burn the baby from my body. In 1990, Shirley Gunn, a former MK soldier, was detained with her 16-month-old son, Harun, for 64 days. Their arrest concluded a nationwide hunt for the Hotza House bomber, whom the police claimed was Shirley. A few months ago, former top police approached the Truth Commission and admitted responsibility for a number of atrocities including the 1988 bombing of South African Council of Churches headquarters, Hotza House. There are two human rights violations that I have chosen to focus on. 
There could be many more, but I decided to focus on those two only. The first is being accused for Khotza House, the explosion there. And the second is the torch that my son and I enjoyed in 1990. Mr. Adrian Flock had personally congr congratulated the forces for their tremendous su success in creating havoc and mayhem in Johannesburg and for that particular bomb. And at that point, I thought, you're not going to get away with this. And I laid criminal charges against Mr. Flock, both individually and severally, which means that in his individual capacity, I, I sued him, I am suing him for 500,000. And because he happened to have been the Minister of Law and Order at the time, I sued the minister, the ministry as well, for the same amount. Shirley has reclaimed her dignity by taking on the apartheid state legally but the emotional scars remain. The security police in the, in the course of interrogation at Kulemburg uh, were, were, were telling me that, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a terrible ma mother, that um, I'm not cooperating and that's why I'm there. And um, if I wanted my son and I to get out, then I had to cooperate. And um, that this was no place for a child and, you know, why was, I not allowing him to be set free and 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 so forth. It was just too horrific to think that they would maybe take the drastic route and 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 remove him forcibly and take him away. And that's finally what they did. Two senior social workers from the department uh, arrived um, with a warrant for his arrest. They even brought a tape recording of his voice and. There was so much anguish in my son's voice as he called my name, Mama, 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 on the tape. Eight days later, um, my emaciated son with his head, eyes sunken into his head, and he looked very, very depressed. He was returned to me. So I didn't, I, I mean, I knew that this was a victory. He was removed from me forcibly. It wasn't their good heart that brought him back to me. Something happened out there. I didn't know what had happened out there, but at least I had my child back. And I just, I still remember his eyes, you know, this doubt in his eyes. They've done it to other women. I'm not the only one. And so for all women who have been through this and maybe haven't been given the chance to articulate what I'm being given the chance to articulate, I hope that it helps them to recover from their experiences. Um, I mean, it's taken me years, and I'm still not over it. And Harun is still not over it. It's something that will take time. With the right kind of um, uh, support around us, we can get over it. We've come to the end of this week's special report. The Truth Commission's Human Rights Violations Committee has hearings in Pretoria, Beaufort West, and Port Shepston this coming week. And the Amnesty Committee sits in Durban. We'll meet you again next Sunday with full background reports on all these hearings. Goodbye.